I'm not the king of Liverpool. I'm the, I'm the god. <laughs> If you see Chris, just like you can call him a shin pad wanker, but I think the barbecue cunts is too far. <laughs> Maybe double enders could be my point of difference in this <laughs> quite market. congested market. I mean, the one where he gets hit with the ball and he says, you know, that's why you're in the fucking reserves. It was things like that, but with like so cutting. Hello and welcome back to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. I've uh, got Statman Dave and Chris Start with me as usual. Boys, good? yeah, good, good, thank you. Yeah, I had my birthday. Um, Happy week, birthday. Week or two ago now. Yeah, it was good What'd fun. What did you go to? Um, I did what I do best. I had a day of barbecuing. <laughs> yeah. I sent you boys some pictures yeah. as yeah, well. Yeah, he sent me a picture, yeah. Do you know what's amazing? That's gone in the file. I sent you... Um, <laughs> with the rest of them. I sent, <laughs> I sent pictures uh, to Crouchy, especially of me barbecuing, because he doesn't want them. Uh, and I love barbecuing, right? <laughs> I, you had the yeah. penny on, you, you had the gloves and all that. You're like really going for it this time. Real father penny. I thought he'll love this stuff, right? <laughs> but I was doing it for my birthday. So for my birthday, I had a really great birthday, which was basically my wife and kids left me alone and I sort of barbecued and drunk beer and watched football. <laughs> oh, dream. I sort of get that a bit, yeah. It was perfect. Um, but I sent this picture to you and you came back at me with some abuse, as you always do. <laughs> and then only clocked that everyone else in the WhatsApp group were in. I uh, was saying happy birthday. And yeah, only yeah, then was yeah. like, oh, happy birthday, <laughs> mate, by the way. So you basically just called you. me a twat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you realise it's my birthday. <laughs> so I tried to retract those statements a little bit. Yeah, I want you to have, I want you to have a lovely day. I just, you know, I just want to, I just don't, I'm not having the barbecue situation. I think this summer we are going to do it though. We're going to do, I'm saying we're going to like barbecue together, but I want to do a real low and slow. We're going to do hours. Mm. And I think I think you'll get into it at that point. Yeah, my issue with it is similar to, you know, it's, I don't know, it's like people taking it so seriously. And I, I don't know, maybe because I'm just not into it, but, you know, I, I am coming around slowly to it. Mm. I, I, think. Th I think I will get you into it, but how are you boys? Any, I'd love to uh... stuff a chicken with a can. <laughs> 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 wow. I would like... You know, we discussed that, didn't we? I would yeah. like to put a can up a chicken's ass and, mm. and then and cook it. Yeah, and I can do that for you. Beer can, isn't it? The, Jam <laughs> the Jamaican dish. It's beer, <laughs> it's beer can chicken. Yes, you're right, Crouchy. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of the most exciting thing for me in the in the last couple of weeks. You boys, any? Yeah. Ex been I had to drink off? juice today. Yeah, I had to get a carrot, ginger, and apple juice because I had such a heavy weekend. I had to try and balance my life out. It was pathetic. Really? Okay. It was a heavy one, was it? A little bit of a heavy one. You know, a few 4 a.m. jobs, straight back into it. Chumba Wombard, went to the football. <laughs> and then up. after about two to three pints, I was probably back at the 4 a.m. status. So yeah, got to kind of greens and healthy things this week for me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. last episode was all about comebacks, wasn't it? And um, there was loads of topics we didn't discuss in that as well. Uh, you take it, uh, have, you have you changed your social media habits at all, Crouchy? You've been laying off Twitter or do you just stick to the funny stuff? Um... I've never really got into the politics mm. um, in general, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just, I just, you know, you have views on certain things and, you know, all four people, you know, the world revolves around people's opinions, doesn't it? But um, I just feel like I'm going to leave the professionals to, to chat about that. I'd, I'd, I'd probably get myself in trouble. Yeah. Although which, which always seems to happen because... Everyone's got an opinion. You're never going to win. So yeah, uh, I think it's just best left alone. Yeah, but me. sometimes it's not about winning. That's the thing with you. You're so competitive. Like, you don't need to win Twitter. You just need to, like... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It doesn't work for you. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah, but I don't want to lose either. No. <laughs> <laughs> that said, I do like the idea of being able to vote for Peter Crouch in the election. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. and it's something we should consider because... One of the things we haven't done as a podcast yet is run for government. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But you know what? There's no limit to what this podcast seems to be able to achieve. So yeah. we could try. But imagine, man, yeah. what a way to pass the pod. Primetime TV, Jeremy Vine coming to a, a local sports centre or, or uh, <laughs> sports hall and <laughs> Crouchy's running... <laughs> <laughs> for the for the pass the pod party, you know, <laughs> or the chumba wumba party. <laughs> chumba wumba party. That's good. <laughs> we shouldn't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Um, today we're going to be talking about famous quotes. Mm. 
Right, and there's so many uh, places we can go with this because actually there must be so many things that are ingrained in your brain from stuff you've heard mm. growing up and developing through football. And then there's obviously some of football's greatest quotes. You've actually said a couple of them as well, <laughs> if you think about it. Yeah, I've said some, uh, some stuff over the years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I find it really strange that, you know, your, your football's been your whole life and then you're thrust into a world where you have to speak to the media and then all of a sudden, you know, I think it's better now for the young kids. But for me growing up, it was like, I remember when I first got my first England squad and they were like, right, you're doing the press today and you sit with the radio press, uh, you sit with the written press and then you do a press conference for the TV press. You have all these cameras looking at you and all of these well-respected journalists that are so kind of like well-versed in their field. They know what questions to ask, what buttons to press. And I'm sitting there as a young sort of 23-year-old with no real media training going, right. And at that time, it was like England was... It was very fractious, wasn't it? It was like the, you know, the, the, the press versus the players. And you were so guarded and you had to just not give away stuff. Um, I found it really difficult to, to navigate that. Do you remember what they told you not to say in that England press conference? What the hell is that? Sorry, we Sorry should say, that. if you can hear some uh, noises going on in this podcast, we're back in the pub. <laughs> um, obviously, last week, we weren't in our usual place. We've come no back to the pub. No podcast records like this, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, it's just a drill in the back. That's, that's fine. No, but you see, I wanted to clarify that it's a drill because they are renovating the toilets. My first thought was, have the toilets been renovated and are now so like echoey that what we're listening to... <laughs> <laughs> it does literally sound like someone's following through. Um, so apologies think, for that. I don't think we're going to be able to stop that, whether it is a drill or someone unloading heavily <laughs> on this particular pub. Um, but I hope it doesn't distract from your enjoyment of this podcast. Yeah, yeah, I hope not. Anyway, back Dave, to where it. Were where, you? Yeah, back to the question. Obviously, the media training, we always hear about players being really worried about <laughs> <laughs> about that as a as a situation. What do they say not to do? So just before the what press conference, what a mistake this podcast is! I mean, fucking hell, we're like we're reaching new lows. We are. This is shit. If you actually look at what this is, this is really, really shit, isn't it? Like every other podcast has gone into this glossy, like TVS quality. I can't believe it. It's like HD, it's 4K. <laughs> we're still in the boozer. There's drilling going on. Leave all this in. The people need to know. <laughs> sorry, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on, Dave. So crouchy, third time lucky. Mm. What do they tell you not to say? Um, do you know what? You have the, you have the press guy next to you and, and, and the, like, there's another assistant and they're all, they're all flapping like, <laughs> and making me more nervous. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not completely stupid. And they're trying to get, obviously, you know, stories and things. So you think... Just don't, I hope it's not a bad one. You know, I hope it's just not, you just fingers crossed like that. What are they going to take out of what I said and, and use? And it's quite nerve wracking, to be honest. Yeah. But what I don't understand about um, the kind of media training that you had was, was that you told us before, when you do those interviews, the aim is really to get through and say nothing. Yeah. Uh, so you don't actually appear in any sort of quotes. And I assume the press guy next to you, I would have thought it's his job to be trying to get press from you. So why aren't they feeding you quotes that you say? Um, I, I know where you're coming from, but in all honesty, they, they they work for the FA and they're the same. They don't they don't want any kind of negativity. Um, yeah, I think any kind of positive. If you think if you look at the players that are part for these things, it's the players that are all doing well. It's very rarely, you know, if someone's done something controversial, been sent off the weekend and. You know, they come, very rarely would you see them do the press. It would always be someone who's, you know, well received. I think, um, and yeah, it's 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 a mad situation to be in for a young player, and I, I don't I don't miss it. I'll be honest. Was there anything your dad would say going into those press conferences with England to kind of relax you or make you think better about it? My dad uh, had loads of quotes growing up. You know, some were hilarious some were some that I, I've took with me still to this day like I think we talked about it before like a man in the evenings a man in the morning is one that I sort of live by really mm. it's like if you go out or you want to have a good time whatever you get up the next day mm. and that's something that I've always lived by even if I've had a big night you know since I've retired even still now you know my kids are there at like 6 30 in the morning expecting their dad right you don't you don't lie in you don't 
you know, wallow in self-pity. <laughs> I think you get up. Sometimes Ab can't believe it, but I've been for a swim, you know what I mean? Like with the kids. <laughs> and I'll come back because I just feel like you can't, can't live like that if you don't you best just not going out and that was something my dad sort of instilled in me that's amazing so he's almost why do you do that was that like coaching because that sounds like hangover coaching no i think it, it? i think it's life coaching <laughs> now it's more like was it um, deeper than how we're interpreting it right now no it's is... definitely that oh. like it's, it's definitely along those lines he would be like look go to the parties but do you think the other footballers are doing it you know do you think the other lads who are trying to be professional footballers um, are doing that kind of thing and let me make my own decision, which is, you know, I know we've talked about it before, but that's something, again, that really helped me, I think. Yeah. A man in the evening is a, is a man in the morning. Yeah. It sounds like he's gone for the bird in a hand is worth two in a bush or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's a, Along those lines. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good, I, I think it's a good saying. Yeah. I think it's a good saying. I think it is a good saying. Um, any other pearls from him or... Um, what's your favourite quote, do you reckon, Crouchy? What's your personal... Do you have one? What's your life? Do you well, have a life one, there's one, there's, well, there's, the, 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 the quote that's associated to me is the virgin one. Oh, we need to talk about this <clears> as well because it's, <laughs> that, it's mad that you'll be always remembered like this. Uh, it was a long day of, a, of, a, of doing press uh, and I, I was really bored with the same questions over and over again. And um, it was just a question, what, you know, another one. And I was like, oh, God. And just, they just hit me with, what would you be if you weren't a footballer? And I said, I'd, I'd be a virgin. And obviously it was a throwaway comment, but then that comment got taken and put everywhere. Yeah. And then I was thinking, oh God, like, you know, you have to be on your guard at all times. And that was just a mess around really. But then it actually became, <laughs> people really enjoyed it. There's a hint of irony to it because I think people think that, yeah, that would definitely be true. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why people, people I think that's why it's really it, funny. Like, yeah, Everyone's right. like, ha ha, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so harsh. So I don't know if they're laughing at me or, or with me, but I'm, I'd like to think it's with me. But unless you give another quote, I mean, you've never said anything funnier, have you? So, <laughs> like, like, that is, that's the one that's going to be, I mean, it's mad to think that that will be on the stone there won't it like yeah well I, I, in all honesty i think it was something to do with um at that time there wasn't a lot of humor from mm. professional footballers playing at like a, a certain level it was you know we'll be uh we'll be back stronger next week you know thanks to the fans for supporting us you know we'll we'll do better next week or fans were terrific today um we played brilliant on to the next one you know the same buzzwords all the time Whereas I think obviously that came out and I think it blew people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy thing is though, you are now not a footballer, technically. Mm. So wouldn't it be amazing if, say, you practice celibacy for a period of time, mm. we track it through this podcast, mm. becomes your journey. <laughs> <laughs> You've made me do loads of things <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> You're now no longer, revenge tour. <laughs> you always wondered what it'd be like to to not be a footballer mm. you've always thought you'd be a virgin mm. well let's let you see but i'd like to think i don't have a few options maybe not as many but <laughs> <laughs> maybe not as many <laughs> like all the options i know what you mean i think do you know I, where i'm going with that I actually basically well, to answer your question i'm not willing to do that no, no but, but what i but, but you don't know do you because i would love to know what you would look like now if you hadn't done football, like I'm trying, if I if I if I was a, an estate agent <laughs> or anything, oh it's God, like all right, what would I what would I be like? But I think you'd be great at that because you you've got a bit of the sales about you. Mm. Do you know you are? I, I think you are sort of naturally one of those that's quite good looking, and the tall thing covers it up anyway, doesn't it? Well, I think I think I think you have to have something about you, you need at something. this height. Yeah. If I it, you can't fade into the background. If I walk into a room. People know because I'm so tall, regardless. Yeah. So you either, it's, it's like you either shrink or you own it. Even if I was an estate agent and not a footballer, nothing wrong with an estate agent. So I'm just talking about, just a, I'm trying to normalize a job, a train driver. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a train driver, yeah. I'd like to think I'd be a good train driver. And I'd, I, I'd like to think I'd, I'd, put, I'd have a bit of fun on the tannoy, like <laughs> yeah. you're entering, you know, London, Houston. 
We've been traveling at 120 knots per hour. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, well, make it like the plain ones. Like the plain really. ones, yeah. Like, no. But do, they don't do the plain voice on the train either, do they? They just come at it with like... You get, like they get never off, really yeah. know how to use the system as well. It takes a few goes. Often they leave it on as well. Yeah. You hear them rattling around in there doing whatever. My, my issue... I've got a huge issue with pilots, really, in general. <laughs> Um, the pilot situation, I know we're getting off topic here Sorry. a bit, but my pilot situation is no one gives a fuck how high we are, right? <laughs> Great, do <laughs> like, job. Don't turn my film off and certainly don't turn my kids' film off to tell me <laughs> how high we are. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they just want Finding Nemo on. Yeah, he does, like, and, and I'm sitting there and they're hounding me going, Dad, why is it thin? Why is it pause? Why is it pause? Mm. Why do they do that? Mate, sometimes they wake you up with it. It's oh. nuts. It's like... With the height. But it's, a, a ma it's like a humble brag almost, isn't it? And uh, there's, there's several things with pilots. I think, like, <laughs> look, we, we know someone's... We know someone's flying the plane. Just get the fuck on with it and get as quick as possible. <laughs> and the other one that kills me is when they say, um, oh, sorry, we can't take off. And it's normally a lame reason, but I'm all for it because it's better safe than mm. sorry and all that. But it's all good. We'll make up for it in the air. And my yeah. thing is, we'll do that anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, like, what new skill are you deploying? That Even if we're on time, get us there quicker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, you should be doing that anyway. Yeah. Like, and if you weren't going to go that quick, why weren't you going that quick? Why are you able Ooh. to push it now? <laughs> it's like he was going before, yeah, we were just going to sort of meander over there. I was going to have a bit of lunch and whatever. But... Appreciate we're taking well, off, so I'm going to go a bit quicker put now. Put down on this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean, Dave? Yeah, right. yeah, we no, spot do, on. But uh, you know, announcement. for the nerds like me, I, I like the distance, I like the speed, but I can put it appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With kids, imagine that, like, you've just got them quiet. That's And then the, the pilot comes in, steps in, that would infuriate me, oh, to be quite honest. You're the only one that loves you it. You must be the only Think one. Yeah. Probably, yeah. He's in the toilet uh, banging one out at the half mile club for him. Is hearing pilot stats <laughs> as he's in the toilet. Five hundred miles an hour, <laughs> three thousand meters. Club. <laughs> oh, tell me the altitude. <laughs> Give me the altitude. Wind speed. <laughs> 200 miles per hour. <laughs> Imagine I got in the car and all the kids got in the back and go, I'll be mainly travelling at, <laughs> yeah. at 71 yeah, miles an hour. and <laughs> passing through country at the moment. Um, we are a bit delayed uh, coming out of um, boop, the boop, services, boop. Um, but we will make up for it on the motorway. <laughs> the seatbelt signs are turned boop, on. <laughs> if you Please look to your out. left, you'll see Warwick services. <laughs> I don't know why they do it. No one else does it. Coach drivers, no one. No, you're exactly Train right. drivers. But any other industry, you Boat? get to just show off halfway through. Yeah. And it's always almost like they're just bored shitless up there. Right? It's like, fuck me, I've, I've had some food, I'll just burden everyone else with some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we want to talk about other quotes. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't really got into any. So Crouchy had the classic virgin one. Mm. Thing is, it's not really football that. No, it? no, no. I mean, you know, I'm trying to think like the whole back stronger thing is derived from those boring interviews where people say, you know, we lost today and we'll be back stronger next week. And we laughed about it. It's now become our tagline. But there are some great quotes out there. S Mourinho being oh, Mourinho. The, the, the probably king of shithouse quotes. Yeah, for sure. And I think when, when he started in the Premier League, he had that journey from Porto, won the Champions League with Porto, won the UEFA Cup the season before. Absolutely incredible. But how he came in and called himself the special one, Crouchy, mm, great in answer. one of his first press conferences. What do you make of that? Being a player at the time as well. Football for me is all about the characters. Like I've always enjoyed Cantona and, you know, even like you know, Balotelli, like Ibrahimovic, people like the, like the quotes that these people have. Are, as long as you can back it up, obviously, you know, Mourinho sort of later on in his Premier League career found it was a bit difficult. So it didn't, it didn't work as, as, as well. But some of his, still some of his quotes, even then, were magnificent. Do you I think thought. he did it on purpose? Did he write them? almost before yeah with the intention of always being seen and you i guess with people like him he was very good at being in the press and it played well for him it made him a, i'm not saying it's yeah. the only reason it made him an in-demand manager but it gave him a character that yeah. fans kind of wanted every in the press think, like really. feeling of it it was like every press conference it was like it must have been packed in there because it was you knew he was going to say something Incredible. Like, we've got, we got some here. How are you going to deliver these? So you can deliver them as Mourinho? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm not very good at accents, am I? No, but you're... I will try. 
There's one of my favorites, Crouchy. On Arsene Wenger. Mourinho on Wenger. I, th- I think he's one of these people who is a voyeur. He likes to watch other people. There are some guys who, when they're at home, they have a big telescope to see what happens in other families. He speaks, he speaks, he speaks about Chelsea. <laughs> I was so distracted. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> I like this one. I like this one. What was the result? 3 0. I won three premierships and I won premierships alone. And the other 19 managers put together. Wow. That's a great quote, isn't it? To be fair, that is a great quote, right? He's literally backing it up with stats, Dave, right? Exactly. I, I love that. <laughs> that was after a 3 0 defeat to Spurs as Man United manager. And, you know, from that point, obviously, he was. Reflecting on the league, you had Guardiola and you had Pellegrini, one league title each. He'd won three at that point. It's fair. I want to take you to a one at Inter Milan, but it also gets into the shithousery of uh, Jose Mourinho. Probably not going to do his his accent, um, but he said, um, oh, Dave, I think, I think that's I think that's gone now, isn't it? Let's 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 move on from the accent. <laughs> yeah, right? let's move on from the accent. Um, he said uh, on Inter Milan, it's not important how we play. If you have a Ferrari and I have a small car to beat you in a race, I have to break your wheels or put sugar in your tank. That was criticisms on his playing style at Inter Milan. If I have a Ferrari and you've got a small car... If to to beat one, you in the race, yeah. I've got to break your car or put sugar in your engine. So is he, is, he, is he justifying the way he's playing? But he's Inter Milan manager. He is Inter Milan, but at that time, there were some pretty dominant teams. When Bayern Munich were really good at that time. Real Madrid were decent. I totally buy into that quote. Like When we were at Stoke, it's like... Arsene Wenger used to get really arsy about how we used to play, right? But if we played the same game as Arsenal, we'd get absolutely battered because mm. they're better than us. At, you know, playing that beautiful, like, passing football. We were never going to... So we had to get an angle in, in every way you possibly could. And yeah, those angles were close to the, to the mark at times. Like, you know, we grew the grass higher than this table. And then... Um, <laughs> We, uh, you know, we we mo- removed the advertising hoardings from the side of the pitch so Rory could launch bombs <laughs> into the box. And we had, was you know... Done? Was the whole... Um, did they all go, did they? Yeah, we got rid of them. We, oh, we, I we, assumed there was just tactical gaps left in. I couldn't remember. No, we moved them right back, wow. if you remember. And we also put gaps in them. And then was all the ball boys had, um, like, little towels yeah. to dry the ball quickly. Um, yeah, there was so many little things that we obviously did to gain an advantage. And that was the only way we could compete with, with playing against Arsenal. And it, it rubbed them up the wrong way. And I get that quote completely. I've got a huge amount of respect for Mourinho. I like, I have come across him quite a few times. And it's, it's always been a pleasure. You know, I get... I some... thought you were going to sign for him. Well, there was he FaceTimed me after one of his press conferences, yeah. believe it or not. And uh, it, was, it was at Tottenham. And there was a rumour that I was coming back. And he did the press conference and he got the, obviously the, the press guy I still know from Spurs. And it came up and he was FaceTiming me. But I'd literally just been watching Mourinho's press conference. <laughs> and he was still in the kit. And he'd obviously got it. And, and he was like, Crouchy! Like that. And I was like, no way, Mourinho! <laughs> and then uh, he was like, come on, you're coming back. We're gonna, we're gonna, like, so why was he doing that? Was, was as someone like, as someone baited him to do it. It was a rumour like, or something. So he that, wanted to address, someone had asked him probably in the press conference, right? I and think so. He, someone had asked him, yeah. And he said, yeah, we, we're, we're going to get him now. back. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously it was but, a joke. You know, I'd retired. Was it obviously a joke? It could have happened. I would have loved it to have happened to be fair. But <laughs> I was half thinking, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, and then he went, ha, 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 Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> You're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The part of me died inside. I went, oh no, I've got, I've gone. It's all over. Yeah. Why do you think he likes you? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm not. I don't know if he. I don't even know if he does like me. But he's always been so like engaging with me. Like, he's always been, you know, w- willing to help. Um, you know, willing to chat about old times. About he's treated me, you know, like they trusted me completely. You know, we're totally honest and open about things and. I really respected that because I respect him as a person, like what he's achieved. And uh, I think, like you say, towards the end, is uh, you know, of his time in the Premier League, you know, he's still doing a doing a good job. But um, he, he he became like is a little bit disrespected, and um, yeah, I think because some people criticised him, I think he became spiky because he didn't like the criticism. And I think 
those people probably don't like him. And I think that feeling's mutual. But um, for me, I, I can only go on what the, you know, my uh, dealings with him, and he's always been incredible with me. But just mm. just three records that like sums him up, because I think we forget, like you're saying, Crouchy, that he was very, very good. He's the only manager in the history of football to never lose a UEFA composition final, Europa League, Champions League, obviously, Porto versus Monaco, Inter Milan, Bayern, Man United, Ajax. He's got the longest unbeaten run at home that lasted nine years oh, across no. Porto, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Real Madrid. Nine years. Nine years. He didn't lose at home. That is, that is insane. But the character of him was largely formed by these quotes, right? There's certain managers who, you're right, Dave, to, to highlight um, some of the things that they've achieved because sometimes you can, I think, as a football fan, just write off certain managers for the caricature of themselves. Does that make sense? Ian Holloway. Mm. I mean, what a mate. Some of the best quotes ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all sorts of analogies. In fact, my favorite thing in press conferences is when people go for analogies, but then can't really follow through with them. Yeah. So they start sounding roughly right, mm. but then they've stuck to that path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't really follow it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, I, they're the best. I know exactly what you mean by that. They're they're, the they ones. are good. I. Just touching back on Mourinho, though, I think like the, like the Arsene Wenger situation where he says Arsene Wenger is a specialist in failure. That's I mean, it's, it's shithouser of the highest order. Like it, it's amazing. It's what he was saying is obviously they had an amazing team, but then they didn't win anything for so long, and he was consistently winning, but he was keeping his job. And he said at Chelsea, if that was the case, I wouldn't be in a job. So he's basically can't get the sack, which is incredible shit. But then quotes that I don't <laughs> even think were that weird or wonderful become big quotes because they're spoken by him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But also, I prefer I think... not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. I mean, if you think about it, uh, there's, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically saying he's not going to speak and somehow that is... <laughs> become a meme. An amazing <laughs> Mourinho quote. Because everyone knows what he's referring to and yeah. why. Um, and also, all of them are you know, pre premeditated. He must think about them and and use them. But I think Alex Ferguson did. You know, he said things in the press and used that that, that sort of used it fired up his team and it, it got, you know, unsettled. I mean obviously what he did to Kevin Keegan was a mm. you know was was world famous. But um, you know, and I think Mourinho does the same thing. He uses the press to either you know he did it with his own players, you know, either G them up or you know, bring them down a peg or two um, and sometimes. How know. do you feel about that as a footballer that he would kind of lay into people publicly? Lay into, do you know what I mean? Mm. Criticise publicly and almost some would say not really observing the sanctity of the yeah, changing yeah, room by true. doing that. Yeah, yeah I'm not, not a huge fan of that. I've got to be honest. I think he should do things face to face. I'm pretty sure he, he did. Um, but you know, if it's not getting through, maybe you've you've got to let let people know. And and and, and what I see because when you are in the dressing room, it's so frustrating, even as a player at times, where you see a player making all the right noises in the press or on social media, and then you see them in training every day, and you're like, nah, mm. you're portraying something so different to how you are actually behaving. Like I, we've talked about this before, but that. That one where they're showing themselves with a personal trainer on Instagram, like running up stairs and, <laughs> you know, like in the gym and stuff. And it's all like on Instagram. And then I look at them in training and they're just, you know, they're pretending to be injured or not, you know, not training correctly. And you think this is all outwardly. And then if the fans then get on top of the manager and like, why are you not playing? Look at this, what he's doing. This, It's like... It's so hard to bite your lip and and say nothing to that situation. I think that happened a lot at this time of Man United at the end. I mean, there was a lot of that outwardness without the effort on the train. Well, yeah, there was a lot of Instagram footballers. I think that's the term. Instagram footballers, <laughs> that's a quote, is it? What's this? Whoa. What's an Instagram footballer? <laughs> <laughs> was exactly what I've just. Well, Crouchy, everyone, hold on, you got to read this. <laughs> if amazing. I speak, I am in big trouble. <laughs> everyone, everyone's now just. <laughs> we're all just talking in quotes. <laughs> That's what podcasts are now an as well. Listen, Think an Instagram it. footballer is self-explanatory, isn't it? Someone who's who's wants, yeah, I don't know, to all the trappings of being a footballer without actually being a footballer. You know, which is the hard work and dedication it takes to become a player and, and stay at the top. 
So we've talked about a couple of manager quotes there. There's obviously some some very famous player quotes. And uh, and wider than that, some great chairman quotes from the past. Um, can we briefly, only because I saw this doing the rounds on social, uh, talk about Barry Fry? <laughs> who I'm happy to talk about Barry Fry all day. <laughs> I think a lot of people listening to this might not know who Barry Fry is. Um, Absolute legend of the game, I'd, I would say. Um, big, one of the biggest characters you'll ever meet in football, I think. You know what, chairman, director of football, manager at Peterborough. Um, I think he had every job going there. Uh, I've got a little story about Barry Fry. One of my mates got managed to get his phone number somehow. And uh, we used to call him on a regular basis, like once a week. And he would always answer, like always. Even though it was the same number, never hidden. And we'd rig up and go, Barry, like... And, my mate would give him some grief or whatever and he'd go, oh, fuck off, you silly little cunt, stop ringing. And he'd always like, abuse my mate like back. But then he would answer the next week. So exact same, <laughs> exact same, she'd go, should we ring Barry again? He'd go, yeah, just ring Barry Fry. And then he'd just, he'd just volley him back. With he a look. sounds like Mo in The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just never... Unreal. Barry Fry was filmed on uh, one of the deadline days. I can't remember what year. Remember this one? <laughs> 1997 was it? Yeah, a great year for football. And uh, <laughs> he's negotiating the deal for a player who's in his office, and there's loads of back and forth, and it's amazing to watch if you haven't seen it. Oh dear! Next on his wanted list, the Wickham striker Miguel de Souza. <laughs> Miguel de Souza <laughs> sounds <laughs> like a dream team. Hope your goals don't put us down. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello. He's in for some hard bargaining. Great documentary, this. I remember it. Yeah. I think we'll be looking at 8.50, 9.50 and 10.50. No, no, no. You, you, you ain't going to get that. <laughs> Fucking hell. Are you sure? <laughs> right, stop. Right. Stop. <laughs> stop. You <laughs> so back. Eight, eight. So when he says, like, um, so, so, okay, the player's in there, player's agent, and Barry Fry in his blue blazer, <laughs> the epitome of old school chairman yeah when the agents are right, we're looking at 850 950 the bit that always bugs me with this clip what are they talk about there is that so like, be on 850 a week 950 a week and 1050 uh, a week and barry's going over three year contract probably that would be like yeah right. i think he's looking for that a week barry's over three years immediate. barry's not having it no <laughs> no no <laughs> you ain't gonna get that here son <laughs> You've been in this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before. I have. Yeah, so well, loads of times. Right. I'm desperate for you, but I couldn't be nowhere near that. First year, five fifty. Second year, six. <laughs> Third year, six fifty. Plus ten grand for thirty goals, all competitions, each season. The way the agents writing it down as Supposing well. You is have a survival bonus. This is amazing. Love that. Survival bonus. That's a yeah. new one. Oh, fucking love survival it. Survival bonus. That's a new one. <laughs> eight games. Yeah. How much? Ten grand. How much? Ten. How much? Ten. It's got to be money well spent. It is. Five. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. That's your own sticking. Look how long it's going on for, these negotiations. Done. Welcome aboard, my man. Cheers. Brilliant. Thanks a million. Thank Top you, man, young Barry. Right. Sold to the fat bastard in the blue blazer. <laughs> <laughs> best quote. Great. Mate, uh, Sold to the fat bastard in the blue blazer. One of the best quotes, you reckon? One of the greatest quotes. Bangs a hammer. Sold to the fat bastard in a blue blazer. Mm. It's just, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? Imagine you had J.W. Henry doing that. You know... Yeah. Sold. <laughs> yeah, it's it's brilliant. But an amazing quote and sort of sums up football at that time. Mm. Unless this is still going on in some places. Oh, listen, maybe. you know, like lower levels like was 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 a lot different, I suppose, to to the Premier League. You know, I've I've negotiated, you know, contracts at you know, when I was younger and stuff, at Dulwich Hamlet or you know, going uh but one my first contract at QPR, me and my dad did it ourselves. Um you know, without an agent and stuff. And it was, it was interesting being part of that, mm. you know, because it's, you see it on the, you know, telly or you just read about it. No one really knows what it's like being in that kind of contract 
negotiation situation. But you almost want to sign for Barry Fry just so you get the hammer and uh, yeah, yeah. sold to the fat bastard <laughs> in the blue blazer. I mean, I would love to get this man auctioning at Crouch Fest or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mm. There's something we should do with him. It'd be good to have him on. It'd be good to get him on. I know he's got some great stories. Should we do a couple of player quotes? Mm. Dave, where do we start on this? I mean, there's so many to choose from, isn't there? I yeah. We need a real character. We do. Obviously, Peter Crouch and the Virgin quote is, is sensational, but <laughs> Ibrahimovic. Oh, yeah. He has yeah, got yeah. a few bangers. A few bangers. Uh, when you buy me, you buy a Ferrari. I say that to Ab sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like I say it like, it's like having a Ferrari in the garage and never driving it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ibrahimovic, where does he sit? European oh, strikers. The best. Where like, you put him? Quote wise, the best. There's no one better. I mean, let's rattle through some of these, Dave. Um, what Carew does with a football, I could do with an orange. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be the king of Manchester. I'll be the god of Manchester. Oh, these are great. A, a, aren't they? a World Cup without me is nothing to watch. So it's not worth waiting for the World Cup. Great. What, what I love about this bottom quote, Crouchy, is mm. it's about a player that he's played and a skill that he's done. First, I went to my left. He did two. Then I went to my right. He did two. Then I went to my left again. And he went to buy a hot dog. <laughs> Zlatan Ibrahimovic is analysis of the move that he pulled on the then Liverpool defender, Stefan Henchos. Oh. I mean, it's just outright disrespectful, isn't it? <laughs> it's absolutely it's something shocking. something you might say on the bus home or something. You know what I mean? But like... <laughs> For it to be out there. Zlatan seems to have this ability of saying the perfect thing at the perfect time mm. in quite random situations as well. And some players have it. And it seems to be more of a striker thing, dare I say it, as well. Do strikers kind of have to give better quotes than goalkeepers or, or, or defenders? Is this yet another <coughs> striker difference? Look at Balotelli. Look mm. at um, Cantona, of course. Cantona, famous right. seagulls, the trawlers. you know. The, the trawlers and the seagulls was one of the best. That's, I mean, that's the, the best quote of all time, it's, surely. It's, yeah, it's definitely. There, 100%. Cantona's got some absolute belters. Yeah. Though. Like, what a man. Obviously, he's the king of Manchester. Yeah. And when he arrived, he said, well, I will be the god. I won't be the king of Manchester. I will be the god of Manchester. Yeah, that's it. Peter Crouch. Imagine, imagine that. that. When I arrived at Liverpool, right? When I was 13 games in without scoring. <laughs> and I went, I'm not the king of Liverpool. I'm the, I'm the god. <laughs> and I go, fuck off, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the problem. You need to back it up properly. And I think he does. But it's also with, with Cantona. It's like the disrespect. Like the, uh, Man United and Juventus had a good rivalry in the 90s. And one quote from Cantona, Deschamps gets by because he always gives 100%. But it'll never be more than anything other than a water carrier. Yeah, I remember the water carrier shot. Water? I've, no, I don't remember that. Yeah, water I remember carrier. that. They called him a water carrier. <laughs> so he's got no technical quality, <laughs> not good on the ball. He just gives 100%. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, one of my favourite things about Cantona is when he did the Liam Gallagher video, you know, once, great tune. And he's walking around the house and he did all the acting and Liam talking about it. And Liam says that he um, didn't want... Uh, any flights, he didn't want any hotels. And we were like, well, let me get you a hotel. And he was like, I get my own hotel. So let me get you a flight, I get my own flights. And he said, let me get you a car at least to the, you know, from the airport. He said, I get my own car. He said, what do you want when you arrive? Like drinks wise, he said, I get my own drinks. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he come, did the video, fucks off and you never saw him again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what I want from Eric Cantona. Yeah. You know, like, I want him to be aloof. I want him to have that mystique about him and that magic. I mean, we should throw it out there. I'd love him on this podcast. That's something that we need to achieve, him. I think. Mm. I'd like to not promise the listeners because um, that'll be a quote that I'll never deliver on. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'd like to do is say, it's in motion as much as Dave Station. Can you imagine him, <laughs> you imagine him sat here because he's a legend? I'd be so fucking intimidated by the guy as well because you just know he's going to sit there staring right through you. It's going, oh. be, it's going to be a tricky pod. Oh, mate, we've got to get him on. I think a lot of the quotes that we've talked about so far have been from people with massive, massive egos. So you sort of mm. expect it with part of their character. How about quotes from people that were a bit more, um, I don't know, like softer spoken? Where should we start? Harry Redknapp? Uh, well, yeah, Harry, Harry's... Well, he was a bit of a character as well, wasn't he? But he said some amazing things. Uh, yeah, I mean, that Harry was, when he was angry, he was, that was when he was his best, I thought. I, like, uh, he's so <laughs> cutting. But you knew him really well, so you got to see some of these quotes firsthand. Should we yeah. run through a few Harry Redknapp quotes and, and 
you... Well, yeah, I mean, this, this is my favourite. See which ones you remember and which ones you think. No, you did, did, I, I, I didn't know this one, but I can see him say, saying it. If you can't pass the ball properly, then a bowl of pasta's not going to make much difference. <laughs> That is so cutting. That is so cutting. But that's that about, the type of thing. Know? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, the one where he gets hit with the ball and he says, um, you know, that's why you're in the fucking reserves. It was things like that. But with like so cutting, but like really quick and sharp-witted. Do you know, I'd love to know who that player was that hit Red Nap. Was it someone we all know now? I've heard various you've got, people you've got a rumored name have you i've got two or three names all right well let's throw it out there we'll give whoever this person is an opportunity to confess themselves right? yeah okay reach out to this podcast if you are the person that hit harry redknapp with a ball during that training session maybe we get harry redknapp on the pod and that player finally reveals himself to Harry. <laughs> Harry knows because he's absolutely caned him isn't he? <laughs> oh yeah it's <laughs> yeah. a good point Crouch. no i i do you know what? I think you're right. I think it'd be good to know who that player was. It'd be nice to know. What happened to It'd them. be nice to know. Get in touch. Peter.crouch at acast.com. There's a few, like, really iconic quotes. Like, we've got a few written down here. You know, people think football's a matter of life and death. I assure you, it's much more serious than that. Bill Shankly's obviously famous quote. You don't win anything with kids. Alan Hudson. Uh, it's a great point, but that season, Man United won the league. They scored 73 goals. 31 <laughs> were scored by Giggs, Beckham's goals, Bot and David May, which equates to 43%. So, unfortunately, Alan, United did win something with kids. In all fairness, most of the time, you would struggle to win the league with, with, with kids coming through, but with <laughs> Beckham's goals, Giggs. But, you know, that it was a good group. It, it, <laughs> I reckon if Pundits now had the same situation where United lost like Paul Ince or equivalent and Konchelskis to Everton and they didn't buy anyone I think a lot of people would have fallen into that yeah. hole so I feel a bit for Alan but that was the same year that we had the Kevin Keegan quote mm. where Kevin Keegan exploded um, you know about the title race United coming back from 12 points behind do you want to do, do this quote Crouch? I'd in love best, it in your best I'd Kevin love Keegan. it if we beat them <laughs> What was the exact quote? They've got to go to Middlesbrough and get yeah, something. So we're still fighting for the title. He's got to go to Middlesbrough. And I'd love it if we beat them. I'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't happen though, did it, Kevin? <laughs> Where do you stand on this Cristiano Ronaldo quote, right? Because I'm never sure if I actually believe it. He says, football is not just about scoring goals. It's about winning. I feel like that's rich coming from him. <laughs> but he has won everything, you know what I mean? So... You know, it's got, you can't deny five Champions Leagues, can you? You know, the, the European Championships with Portugal. But the majority is about scoring goals for him. You know what I mean? He's, a, he, he's an animal. He's a machine. Crouch, is this actually one of your quotes? I spent a lot of money on booze, birds and fast cars and the rest <laughs> I just squandered. That's Peter the, Crouch, that, 2006. That's the, quote, <laughs> that's the quote you should have said. Yeah. I wish I'd said that. It's a belted one. But that, that can only come from George Best, I think. that That is... That's iconic. I've really enjoyed this podcast today, boys. It's been a really good one. What would your quote be? Um, you must have said, you've been, you're on the airwaves every single day. There must have been a quote from you that would follow you well, around. Y yes, because it, it came from this podcast. It's the one that people shout at me, uh, even <laughs> about my family, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about shouting, you know, barbecue cunt loudly at me. <laughs> Can we stop that, guys? Um, but if you see Chris, just like you can call him a shinpad wanker, but I think the barbecue cunts is too far. <laughs> the one I get more than anything, doesn't matter what way it is, no matter wedding, birth, like doesn't matter, is just pancake. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if that hasn't worked, they go a bit louder. Yeah, uh, pancake. So you get it everywhere. Yeah, it's it's just Relentless. become a thing now. Yeah, it's but like so many quotes come out of this podcast, isn't they? Like yeah. the, you know, parch, Mike Dean slaughters chickens. Pancake. Yeah. I reckon Mike this. Dean must must hear more quotes from this podcast about him than he ever sort of experienced. Well, I did. I did. You know, even when I was playing towards the end of my career, you know, I remember sitting on the bench at Leeds United and it's quite low down, the benches. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, someone just leant over to the side and I'm right on the end of the bench, but like there's a glass wall. So he's had to put his head right round <laughs> and he just went right round and gone, piss off, Carl. <laughs> 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 I'm on the bench here like it's got, I've got work to do you know? I don't want to piss off Carl now <laughs> oh it's good it's good it's what we do um, we should say as well thank you so much for all the messages that you send into this podcast um, 
And it's great. We've had some great ones already this series, uh, but keep them coming in. Anything you spot in the world of football, anything that you want to pick up on that we've been talking about or any questions you have for Crouchy, make sure you fire them in. You can email us, peter.crouch at acast.com. I'm a huge fan of this message from Tom. Um, he says, when I was younger, I used to get freckles on my chin, which meant my mates gave me nicknames such as Poo Chin and Shit Chin. Anyway, one day, uh, a teacher told me off and kicked me out of the class because she thought I'd been drawing spots on my chin. The deputy head saw me outside my class and explained to the teacher that I had, fre- I had freckles on my chin. Uh, I hadn't been drawing on it. Since then, my teacher came down the pub many times. She always comes over and apologizes and buys me a drink. Chumbawamba. That is That's a, a great story, that. That is a Chumbawamba, mm. though, isn't it? But Shit Chin's not a great nickname, is it? Oh, Vladimir Poochin. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir Putin. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to pour fuel on the fire with that. Imagine his nickname is just Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, good on you, Tom. Oh, good luck, Tom. Or Vladimir, as you're now known. <laughs> <laughs> got any more messages, Dave? <laughs> we've, we've got a few. One from Jack. In my pre-season, my team had a ref which requested that managers and spectators on the sideline wore shin pads in case there was any rogue slide tackles which went off the pitch. He then went on to say that he believes players should have double-sided shin pads which protect the back of the legs as well. Chris, as our expert? I don't think that's necessary. (laughs) Really? It's a nice one. Even you? Yeah, (laughs) Even as an advocate for the shin pad industry. I... <laughs> what about, you know, what about if you adopted the double-sided shin pads? Well, the double-siders, uh, or mm. double-ender, uh, as... Um... <laughs> Are you a fan of a double-ender? Well, I've not thought about it until now, but the more I think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because how many tackles come in from behind <laughs> that you just can't obviously control? Yeah. I'm actually looking into bringing out my own range of shin pads at yeah. some point, this I think. Great. I think we need yeah. to do this. And... and um, mm. Maybe double enders could be my point of difference in this <laughs> in quite <the> market. <laughs> congested market. <laughs> you need a niche, don't you? And I think the double end yeah. could be your niche. Let us know. Would you buy a double ender <laughs> off me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jack, thanks so much. Food for thought. Yeah, though. yeah. Food Great for thought, man. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, we're across all of that, really. Uh, you can get in touch with uh, that thatpetercrouchpodcast.com um, and send us any information or whether you, whether or not you'd be, be across that, really. Mm, pod pads, yeah. something like that. We'll, pod, we'll, we'll work pads. on that. Um, yeah, get in touch through the website. Um, ultimately, that'll be where we're selling them, probably. So, uh, might as well get acquainted with it now. <laughs> Here's a message from Paul. Paul, here we go. Uh, we had a mate growing up in southeast London with a verbal tick who finished every sentence with an A. For example, uh, what time's the football, eh? Uh, his nickname was Rody, short side for road assistants, the AA. The AA, yeah. We do like hearing these nicknames, don't we? I'm People a big fan of nicknames, yeah. I'm a big fan of the nicknames. I, I, I had one recently, <laughs> his, uh, his nickname was the parachute because he kept letting everyone down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a great one, is it? Yeah, we get a few of these sent in, so yeah, always feel free we're always, to we're always, uh, we're always enjoy those. pile in with those. Really fun episode today, guys. Hope everyone's uh, enjoyed it. Um, yes, Dave? Before we go, uh, Bakayo Saka, any thoughts on his oh, parching? Oh, parch-like behaviour. I've never gone out. He's gone out for dinner in central London with the manager, two ball. What do you think that's about? Like... I, I can't see any reason why those two would have gone and had a nice cosy dinner and it not, it sort of, questions would not be asked from the other players. I mean, how would you have seen that? The way I'm seeing it now is like he is such an important player for Arsenal now. And his contract, I believe, is up in a year's time. And I, I, I believe there might there may be some buttering up going on there. You know, it might be Parchy actually from Arteta. And what do you say if your manager says, we're going for dinner tonight. Do you, do you turn that down? You know, for... I think you assume a few other people are going as well. Like you don't assume it's a it's a candle lit one. Yeah, but imagine you turn up and it's Odegaard and Arteta, and you're sitting. Oh. It's like a job interview. Mate, yeah. Odegaard will be absolutely fucking El Parchio. El Parchio. The man spends his life parching Arteta. <laughs> 
to now see. Imagine he wakes up in the morning and sees that no, on social. No, no. I'd across love to know the, what Ogre across God the newspapers thinks. over breakfast. I reckon a little tear will just yeah just roll down his face. Just imagine training that day. What El Parcio would have to do. God knows what was said. I'd love to know. I'd love to know. Um, Interesting one. Yeah, yeah. I, I had loads of messages. I woke up to a flurry of them just saying, um, the king of Parch, the king of Parch is, 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 is Saka. Or, well, maybe that's the way to look at it. Is El Parchio no more? Is this the thing? Is Odegaard no longer the Parched of Arsenal? Is it Saka? Or is this, as you were also suggesting, a reverse parching? From Arteta to Saka <laughs> in an attempt to keep him at the club. <laughs> I think so. We, I think I think it's manager parching. I think. Yeah, be good to. It really would be good to find out more if anyone can shed light on that. Yeah, get in touch. All right, bye, right, boys. Nice stay stuff. across it, guys. Uh, Chumbawamba. Yeah, back stronger, everyone. Chumbawamba, pass the pod and all that. Yeah, absolute Chumbawamba. Yeah.